This next technical approach is called the construction method. And with the construction method, we'll be working similarly to what we saw in the Riley abstractions, but uh, in terms of measuring and some of the basic shapes that you saw. But there's a slightly different approach. Here we start with the big oval, and I'm drawing the head at a, a skew view so that we can see the side plane working with this. So I've found the big oval, and I've morphed the oval so that it has a little bit more of a likeness to a skull. I'm kind of likening it to the jawline, the back of the head, and the top of the head having their, their peaks and valleys where they should. Once the uh, oval has been morphed, the center line is drawn in, and then a pitch line, or the, uh, the line that runs across the brow that I put in here, um, define the angle of the head. Then the neck goes on. And the same thing happens with the neck. What I'm doing in there, I've divided the oval or the volume of the neck with crosshairs from the C7 to the sternal notch. And then the horizontal line would run out towards the acromion processes or the corners of your shoulders. And these are axes lines to line up all of the hard shapes that go together that when we draw in two dimensions doesn't look three dimensional at all. Now I'm going back up to the face plane, and along the eye line I've found the shape of the eye sockets, and the eye sockets are going to be what are called scalloped shapes, or cut out of the head. I start with the wedge lines. <clears throat> the lines are the angles that show the, the amount of scallop in the skull, and those are the outside angle lines on both eye sockets. And then inside of that mass I put in, or inside of that space, I put in an eyeball. Once the eyeballs have been found, I then move them around until they look like they relate to each other from tear duct to tear duct. <clears throat> then it's much easier to build the nose. So the eyeballs represent spheres. The nose represents a cone shape or a primitive cone shape, as you see here, front plane, bottom plane of the nose <clears throat> that can be divided in half so that you find the left side from the right side. And then we have the side plane of the nose two sides of them. Looking through the nose as if it were transparent, we can see that this is sort of like a gold bar uh, tapering at one end. And that's what we found here on the model. We found a three-dimensional shape using surfaces. And these lines that I'm indicating here are the direction that those surfaces are traveling in, in this particular drawing. So lightly, I'm going to etch in these lines, and these lines also go in the direction of the perspective of that surface. Uh, that's the way I've drawn them. <clears throat>